Hi, my name is Rajkumar Goli and I'm a technical marketing engineer in Intem based networking group at Cisco Systems, primarily focusing on Catalyst platforms. Today, I will walk you through a quick demo that leverages umbrella connector on Catalyst 9000 switches and Catalyst 9100 access points acting as embedded wireless controller to power a simple, resilient, secure and flexible branch. For this demo, we will use the setup which has a mix of wired and wireless clients located at a remote branch. There are two types of users, employee and guest. Whenever an employee connects to the network via wired or wireless, gets an IP in subnet 172.30.1.0/24. Similarly, when a guest connects to the network via wired or wireless, gets an IP in the subnet 172.40.1.0/24. We have three 9100 wireless access points which are operating in embedded wireless controller mode to serve the wireless clients and a 9200 switch to serve the wired clients. Umbrella has been enabled on 9200 switch as well as on 9100 access points. We have two policies configured on Cisco Umbrella, an employee policy and a guest policy. Let's take a quick look on how the traffic flow would look like in this setup when users are wired versus wireless. 9200 switch intercepts the DNS queries from the wired guest, adds a guest tag and forwards the query to Cisco Umbrella. Cisco Umbrella scans through the guest policy and sends DNS reply to either allow or block access to the FQDN. Same workflow applies to the wired employee, the difference being that switch now forwards these queries with an employee tag and umbrella validates these against employee policy. Similar workflow applies to the wireless clients. 9100 access points intercept the DNS queries and forward to Cisco umbrella. Appropriate employee or guest tag is attached to the DNS query based on the SSID that the client is connected. Now let's take a quick look on how to enable umbrella integration on Catalyst 9200 switch or 9100 access point. Prior to enabling umbrella on 9200 switch or 9100 access point, you would need an umbrella account and license. Every account is associated to an organization ID and each organization ID has a token that has to be used to integrate a network device onto umbrella. This token can be located in admin tab under API keys. Network devices token can be used to integrate Catalyst 9200 switch and 9100 access points onto Cisco umbrella. Let's now take a look on Catalyst 9200 on what is needed to integrate it with Cisco umbrella. For umbrella integration, go to configuration in security threat defense. Click on Cisco umbrella integration. You will be prompted to this page. The token from Umbrella API keys has to be used in the registration token section to integrate the switch with Cisco Umbrella. This device has already been integrated to Umbrella. On the right hand side, we have Umbrella out and Umbrella in interfaces. Interface through which Catalyst 9200 can reach Umbrella will be Umbrella out interface. Interface where DNS queries are expected will be Umbrella in interfaces. These are typically the LAN interfaces on Catalyst 9200. Here you can see that we have two tags, employee tag and guest tag. This is how Umbrella differentiates traffic from one interface versus other interface. Let's now take a look on how this can be enabled on embedded wireless controller. The embedded wireless controller also follows the same workflow. Instead of tags, we define parameters here. Go to configuration, in tags and profiles under flex, go to default flex profile under umbrella. This is where we define parameters. So we already pre-configured guest and employee parameter here, which are similar to tags when compared with Catalyst 9200 switches. Once the parameters are configured, go to configuration, tags and profiles, policy. Here you can see we have two policies, guest policy and employee policy each apply to one of the two wireless LANs that we saw earlier on the wireless controller. Click on employee policy, go to advanced tab. Here there's an option for umbrella to map the parameters. 
we can drop down the parameter map and can see the configured parameters here. Since this policy is for employee, we're going to map employee parameter to this policy. Once this is done, now we have to integrate the embedded wireless controller with Cisco umbrella. To do this, go to configuration, security, and threat defense. Click on Cisco umbrella integration. You will be prompted with this page, which is similar to what we saw on Catalyst 9200 switch. We're going to use the same registration token that we used on Catalyst 9200. For parameter map, we're going to use employee CL and guest CL that we pre-configured earlier. Hit apply, and this is how embedded wireless controller can talk to Cisco Umbrella. Now let's go to Cisco Umbrella and see if Umbrella is able to see the Catalyst 9200 switch and embedded wireless controller. To look at this, go to deployments, network devices. Here, Umbrella sees Catalyst 9200 employee and guest tags. It also sees employee and guest from embedded wireless controller. Now we have to define policies and attach the policies to these network devices. To do this, go to policy section, all policies. I already have an employee policy that was defined earlier. To assign a network device to the policy, click on edit identity, go to network devices. Here, Umbrella lists all the devices that it has discovered. We're going to assign the Catalyst 9200 switch with employee tag and embedded wireless controller with employee-cl to this employee policy. We have two destination lists by default, a global allow list and a global deny list. Customized destination lists can be added and moved to allow or block list as required. For this demo, I, I have a block list for employees and a separate block list for guests. These are the URLs that are included as part of employee list. We also have an option to adjust content settings from high to low. This provides additional security that blocks access based on the type of content served by the pages. We also have a section to block or allow set of applications with similar characteristics that are predefined and classified by Umbrella. Similar policy has been applied for guests, the difference here being the network devices. Here we have attached the 9200 switch with guest tag and embedded wireless controller with guest CL. And the block list in here is has different URLs compared to what we have on employee list. Cisco Umbrella has a policy tester that can help you with testing your policy without an actual client. Here is how it works. It looks for identity or the tag from where it's trying to source to and the destination where it's trying to reach. Here, I'm going to add 9200 switch employee tag. Umbrella employee, and I'm going to use a destination cnn.com and see if my policy allows the communication to this destination. And here you can see below that employee policy has been applied and it is this destination is allowed. We'll try to change this to one of the URL that we listed in the block list. Here you can see the employee policy is applied and it's a block due to the list we have uh, customized in the block list. I have wired and wireless clients connected to this setup. So let's go to the setup and do the validation there. Okay, so let's go to one of the wired client. As you can see, and as I outlined earlier, this is a wired client that is connected to Catalyst 9200 switch. And let's look at the IP address this particular client is in. If you go to details, we see this client has an IP address 172.31.100, which means this is part of an employee network. So let's look at the employee block list, which we have configured here on Cisco Umbrella. Let's try to browse internet and see if we have internet connectivity. 
So we can see we do have internet connectivity. Let's try to log into one of the URLs that are in block list. Let's go to netflix.com and see what the response would be. This is blocked by the administrator. Let's look at nba.com, which applies only for guest network. Let's try to go to nba.com if we are allowed for that. And clearly, the employee is allowed to access nba.com. So here, the policies are working fine. Let's try to go to a wired guest and see what the behavior is. So let's log into a wired guest. And let's look at the IP address to make sure. So this one is in 172.41.2, which means this is in guest network. So let's try to go to ESPN.com. It is blocking because the guest is not allowed to access ESPN.com, which is where the policy is working fine. Let's try to access um, Google. So we do have internet. Let's try to access NBA com and this is blocked also so basically the policy the guest policy is applied correctly here let's go to a wireless client and see if the behavior is same or different so this wireless client let's see which ssid this is connected so this is connected to employee and let's make sure it has the right ip so it got an IP 172.30, which means this is an employee network. And let's try to reach uh, internet. And it's working fine. So the client is able to reach internet. And let's try to reach Hulu.com. We can see that this has been blocked as per the block list for employees. Let's try to access NBA.com, which only applies for guests and should be accessible by, by employee and it is perfectly working fine. So the policy on the wireless clients is also applied correctly. Let's change the SSID from employee to guest. And let's make sure it got the right IP. So we can see here that now it has 172.40, which is the guest network. And now let's try to access the same website that it accessed while it was connected to employee network. And now we can clearly see that uh, the requests are being blocked as soon as it switched to guest network. Yep, the requests are being blocked as soon as uh, the client switched from employee to guest. So you see how easy it is to configure umbrella on embedded wireless controller and catalyst switches at the same time, serving both wired and wireless clients. Embedded wireless controller on catalyst 9100 access points and umbrella connector on catalyst 9200 switches and 9100 access points is very simple to deploy, provides resiliency, security, along with flexible deployment options.